The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Into the Pit. I'm so happy to welcome K.D. Stafford, and that's K.D., not Katie, because my wife was like, who the hell are you talking to that's named Katie? That's, that would be my wife. Okay, so there is Katie. <laughs> Just, I'm not talking to her. Hmm. So how are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm living the dream. Staying at home, watching TV, and getting fat. Getting fat. Well, you know, um, I think we'll have, we'll have plenty of time to work all that off after all this is over. <laughs> <laughs> God, no. so we're going stir crazy, dude. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I understand, I understand that, but at the same time, I am, you know, like we talked about earlier, this is kind of my thing. Is I kind of, I'm kind of recluse anyway, so yeah. it's not that much different for me. Uh, you know, obviously, there's a lot of things that have to change as far as. Uh, attending events and stuff like that a lot of that's been done away with for now but yeah Yeah. that kind of sucks so you were going to go to pasadena yeah i was gonna we had an event to do there it was a convention and uh yeah they had to cancel that one and so i'm assuming it was at the uh the big convention center there in pasadena um yes i can't i can't remember what it's called but yes, the Pasadena Convention Center. There we go. <laughs> That's I knew that. Remember. See, I knew that. The only reason I remember <laughs> that is you don't know how many times I had to go out there to fix water leaks. And see, that's not that's not like a out of the ordinary thing. You know, you have the Kansas City Convention Center, and yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> hey, just think all the places you get invited. You you got to make a mistake every once in a while. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's, that's why I try not to, uh, I try not to, um, like call places out by name too much. I'll just say, I don't remember <laughs> the name of the convention center. I'll, I'll just, uh, say, you know, a lot, I'm, most times I'm good at remembering the name of the convention, but not the convention center. But if I'm not, if I can't remember, I will just opt to not say it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd rather not say it than say the wrong one. Well, I hear you. Well, I'll tell you what, the, that one there in, in Pasadena, I told you earlier, it's just outside of Houston. Um, man, I've seen Ted Nugent there. I've seen Mickey Gilly out there. And they have, you know, conventions, like tattoo conventions. Oh, my God. Man, some of the biggest tattoo conventions out there. And it's an awesome place. Yeah, I saw that they were having uh, some other events that were that were tattoo related, and I'm I'm kind of a fan myself of uh, tattoos and and whatnot. So yeah, maybe I can a dig it. Bit. Yeah, yeah, I can I can kind of <laughs> I can dig it. And this arm here. So let's get into the good stuff. Where were you born and raised? Born and raised in South Carolina. Um, Multiple, like you know, mostly within the upstate, right there in in uh, in South Carolina. Um, I lived there for 27 years, actually, um, and until I joined the, I actually joined the army at 27. That's that's when I actually first left. <laughs> yes, and I told you before we even got to talk. I really appreciate your service, and everybody yeah. at the network wants to send out that that gratitude because it, oh, yeah. it takes someone special to do that. Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, you know, I loved it when I did it. <clears throat> um, I still, I look back and I think, uh, was, was it completely necessary to do it at 27? But yeah, it, it was, uh, I stayed in for, you know, uh, nearly eight years. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I planned on staying in, you know, until I got out or like until I uh, retired, yeah. but I ended up, um, you know, they had a big, like a mass exodus, you know? And so, yeah. And 
here I am now. So, and, and I made it. Well. Everything's good. So I appreciate everybody who thanks me for my service. And yeah. So do you ever talk to people in public about, you, you know, your time overseas and that kind of thing or? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem talking about it. Uh, you know, there's some things I don't, I don't particularly like to talk about, of course, but of course. for the majority of it, I mean, um, I doing what I did, it wasn't, um, I, I don't have a problem talking about most of it. You know, uh, I was a mechanic technician while well, I was the NCO for my second deployment. And, um, so that's, we worked on the route clearance equipment. So we would roll out with route clearance and, um, that's basically what we did. We just, you know, we were, we were with engineer, a combat engineer company. I was for the majority of my, my time. So, uh, my deployments consisted of, uh, route clearance, which is riding and looking for IEDs, clearing roads for IEDs. And, um, um, working on the vehicles that completed those, those type of missions. So and we would, we would roll out with them and we would be like the maintenance expert on the ground there. <clears throat> and, um, you know, in case, but I mean, stuff get blown up all the time or you're constantly running over IDs. Uh, it, it's it, most times every, everybody was okay. Most, most times, um, but yeah, uh, it was, uh, because the vehicles that we had that they'd finally developed, you know, um, uh, we had the, the, we have the whole shape, so that helps. I won't go into all the details, but, um, anybody who's in the military or has been in the past decade knows what I'm talking about. So, I oh, man, I mean, does this still bother you? Do you ever think about that kind of stuff? even though you've been out for a while? Oh yeah. I don't, I think there's probably a lot of, uh, things that you you never are going to stop thinking about or people you're not going to stop thinking about, you know? And, uh, so yeah, that's, there's always going to be that stuff there, but you know, it's, um, it's something that we have to learn how to deal with and it's, it's, it's hard. And a lot of people have had a lot of, really bad things happened to him. I was very fortunate. Um, I didn't, uh, get is probably, you know, um, as traumatized as a lot of people have been, but a lot of people have been, you know, subject to some pretty severe things and, and, you know, so I, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. And looking back on it, it's, it was, it was bad then but it probably didn't seem as bad at the time. So it's, it's kind of weird. There's a lot of mixed, <laughs> yeah. uh, like emotions on that. So uh, I still feel like they don't do enough for you guys that come out of the wars and come back to try to readjust the society. And some of you are able to do it, but there's some that just, they can't cope. Yeah. And, and it's sad. It, it is sad. Um, it's something that it's, you know, but it's part of what we do, you know, um, it's part of being in the military is, is taking care of your, yourself too. Right. So, um, you know, you identify there's a problem. And I understand a lot of people have, there's a lot of, I think a, a big problem is there's a lot of already ex like pre existing um, underlying, uh, mental health issues anyway, mm -hmm. with a lot of people and, you know, because soldiers are just like everybody else, you know, that a lot of people will put us up on a pedestal and, and, you know, kind of see no, no wrong or anything, but, um, it's not always that way. There's, I mean, you know, we're people just like everybody else. So, yeah, but that's something you have to take care of, you know, and if you don't, you're going to end up hurting a lot of people and that, you know, that makes it a responsibility that comes along with being in the military, you know, like it's, it's a voluntary military, military. So you have to, uh, you, you have to keep that in mind when joining. So young people keep that in mind. If you're, if you're a young person watching this, keep in mind that 
it's it's a mental thing too so yeah so did you get your love for tech while you were in the military or was that something beforehand uh you know i guess i've always been kind of a, a nerd but i never really like um i mean i, I i've done a, the military was probably my first explorations into electrical and electronic type work you know and then messing with um uh the like the onboard computer systems for a lot of the combat vehicles and stuff they have and uh so it was all really interesting to me you know i learned how how to uh program the microcontrollers and the microcomputers that that run the um the vehicles and stuff and it's pretty it's pretty vast a lot of it is so or i mean it was at the time it's probably it's probably still advanced but um so i kind of found a love for that sort of i think then and then you know i started doing like small time stuff like um i kind of took an online course that taught me how to code because i i never really was good at coding and i <laughs> Not even like web design. Like I hate web design, man. HTML and all that. It's like, ah. but, um, you know, so, but, uh, I've always had kind of a knack for, I don't, I don't want to say just necessarily technology, but if I want if I saw something I was interested in trying or doing, I, it's kind of my thing to learn that. And, you know, so I can really experience it. And so that's, kind of what I, how I started building stuff for like paranormal um, uh, uh, research is um, you know my interest in doing paranormal research and Oops. using that equipment so yeah that's I you know I almost want to say I mean I had I had a bit a little bit of a background in electronics and stuff but I didn't have like I was mainly a, a mechanic, you know, so um, I didn't have the, that in-depth knowledge and, and um, professional training and stuff that a lot of people get. So, um, oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> Sorry, my, my uh, <laughs> Facebook finally started working. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm trying to get the volume and everything off of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, that's, that's, uh, I, so I didn't have much of a background actually. And when I started building paranormal stuff, equipment, that's kind of when I started, um, building that background. So my background is very short, like as far as time wise, it's only, I've only been doing this stuff for like maybe five years now, six years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so just one day people came up and said, Hey, you want to do a TV show? Uh, well, no, I, I had been doing, <laughs> I, I had been building equipment, like I said, for about five or six years. Right. And it's, it was never really like a huge part of what I did up until about two years ago mm -hmm. or maybe was it probably like 2017? Yes. Yeah, probably about 2017. It, that's when it, it started to be, um like people started noticing what i was building right because i've been building stuff all along but you know since i got out of the army but um nobody really i mean the people i knew in my smaller circle they appreciated what i did and stuff you know but i never really meant to make it a big deal right and then so i had uh sent out a piece of equipment with a friend of ours and kind of on like loner and um she had it in the room with her when she was auditioning for the tv show and uh they saw the equipment and they were like well who built that and she said well kd and they said well can we talk to him and they, so she told me and i said yeah I, i'm fine to talk to him and so that's just kind of went from there i mean i had no <laughs> i literally had no I, I literally stumbled into it um yeah well you know it just seems like fate has a way of doing things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's like, uh, the things that, you know, and I'm, that's not to say that I ne like, I never thought it would be cool. Right. 
because obviously that's something we that was always on my bucket list was to be on TV for something, you know, preferably something good and not like, you know, <laughs> America's most wanted. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you already know who Ben Hansen was when you got on the show? Yeah. Yeah. I talked with Ben and we, you know, consulted with some projects on some equipment before. And so, um, and you know so that was interesting and i was always a fan of uh austin porter who's uh helped produce the show and and you know they worked together on uh factor faked yes. paranormal files and that's like one of my favorite all-time favorite paranormal tv shows oh yeah i watched every one of them All right so you know it was it was surreal to get to be there working with them like directly you know ben and austin because mm -hmm. i watched their show religious religiously you know so <laughs> that was surreal to me i was i was kind of like you know like a fanboy in the whole time pretty much uh, oh, you know man. offset or whatever yeah <laughs> you know i can meet a lot of celebrities and people on television and i, I don't normally geek out but right. I could say twice in my life I have. Right. Okay. I don't know if you know him, but have you ever heard of an artist named Boris Vallejo? Um, I don't think so. He does a lot of this fantasy stuff like Conan kind of paintings okay. and things. Well, I followed this guy since I was a kid. And then finally I went to a con and there he was. And I got to go up and take my picture and get an autograph. Mind you, I'm 20, when I was in my 30s when I met him. Uh -huh. And I'm walking away with freaking tears in my eyes. And I'm like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> oh, but, wow. but then I met Gene Simmons back in 2010. Yeah, see, that's definitely like fanboy stuff yeah. there. But, you know, I'm, I think I'm actually the opposite. I like big stars. Like, uh -huh. I don't get that starstruck around. But, like, um, I don't know. It depends on what my, I guess it, it depends on uh, what my, like, investment is in them like you know um were they idols of mine growing up so i like gene simmons would be something like that for a lot <laughs> of people and so yeah but uh with with me it's more like uh with uh that show anyway like i love that show that was <laughs> that was that I, lo I just love the approach of the show. I thought I thought everything about the show was great and yeah i guess it was same same way for me but i i just had like a I, I don't know. I guess it was the respect for the way they did the show. So I was like, uh, that was, that's weird. I'm kind of a nerd. So, Oh yeah. I mean, um, I probably would act like that though. If I, if I got to meet like Jonathan Davis from corn or, or Rob zombie, you know, or, yeah. or Ryan Reynolds. Cause you know, like that definitely, I don't think I could handle that. I think I could see myself hanging out with Ryan Reynolds on sixth street here in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, he seems like a cool dude, you know, and, uh, you know, there's probably no shortage of, of laughs there, so. Oh, yeah. I, I could definitely go out and just hang out. I don't have to drink. I can just listen to other people being goofy, and I'm having a good time, so. Right, yeah. Well, Brian Reynolds, you know, that's another thing. Like, I have a lot of respect for him, not just because he did Deadpool so well, but because of his respect for the Deadpool character, you know, mm -hmm. like that he openly displayed and has been like, he became that, that character because, and he knows being a fan of the character himself, he knew what it meant to the fans. So he doesn't step on that. And I think that's, that's very uh, honorable of him or whatever, you know, <laughs> well, I could say I did geek out when I met Katie lots. So, yeah, you, hear, you watched uh, Arrow or Legends of Tomorrow. You'll know who I'm talking about. Arrow. You mean like uh, the Green Arrow? Yeah, show? she was she was the canary, and she went off to Legends of Tomorrow. I didn't. I didn't watch that. I, uh, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of DC. I mean, I I like some DC, but it's usually it's it's kind of like basic DC. So I, I don't get into <laughs> the whole entire uh, Justice League thing a lot of people do and that's cool 
Uh, I just um, – and some people just like the show. They don't even care about the comic books. But for me, I'm <laughs> such a comic book nerd that, oh, yeah. you know, automatically – if a show comes out, let's like, let's say Batman. I think Batman has been just crapped on so much recently that man. And there, and there, there's, there doesn't seem to be a turnaround for that. It's, it's like, they're just like, this ship's going down. <laughs> We're going to push it down as fast as possible. So I, I'm not real happy with the new decisions they've decided to go with, with Batman, yeah. but hey, hey, to each his own, right? It's yeah. it's my opinion, and I, if I choose not to not to watch it, it is what it is. Well, I have to remind myself when I go to the movies that it's not going to be what was in the comic book. They've changed it for a reason. Oh no, yeah, I totally got that. And you know what? Um, it's like uh, I I um a lot of people got mad when they rebooted Spider Man again, right? And then mm-hmm. they rebooted him again, and so there's been like three, no, two reboots, like reboot actual reboots. Uh, since the original with Tobey Maguire came out. And I was a fan of the Tobey Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I loved it. I thought it was kind of, you know, comical, and it was just the right mixture and everything, you know? And it was more – it was very – um, like I can't remember the director's name. What was his name? Oh, man. Um, He did Evil Dead. A.V. He did He did Evil Dead. Oh God! Yeah, I know who you're talking about, and I'm Bruce going. Campbell. I'm, oh my God! I'm, anyway, <laughs> I'm having, right? I'm having a I'm having a blame, drawing a blank, but um, brain fart. Right. God dang! You know what? I'm gonna look at man. I shouldn't even have to Google that, but anyway, yeah. So I but when they rebooted Spider Man, a lot of people got mad, and they were like, Andrew Garfield can't be Spider Man. Only Tobey Maguire can be Spider Man. I'm like. And it, a lot of people got mad because they were rebooting it. Why didn't they just continue with the original? Well, there's several reasons for that. Like, you know, and a lot of these people were comic book fans. It's like, okay, just think about it, bro. You have Spider-Man, you have like spectacular Spider-Man, you have, exactly. you know, there's multiple uh, versions of Spider-Man and uh, like even his origins and all that stuff. And, and, you know, it's in each different, telling of the story and obviously you're not just going to want to just box that character in and never explore anything new with it so it's, it's about the, i understand all that it, for me it's more a a problem of the movies just totally sucking yeah. <laughs> and and the actors that they're chewed that and not to say they're bad actors they're just the wrong actors a lot of times Oh, I can definitely agree with that. I did not like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Um, well, it's you know, I don't, I don't have so much the problem with the majority of the MCU choices as I do with um, DC's choices. Yeah, you know, because I mean, like now, green, uh, and it's a lot of times it's not even the actor choices. Like I said, it's just the movie just sucks. It's like they were checking a box that they wanted to check, you know, because there might have been some sort of need for it but um like green lantern for example i mean oh, ryan God. reynolds ryan reynolds absolutely, he was perfect for that part he absolutely was perfect. yeah absolutely no excuse for making that movie suck it i mean they had ryan reynolds terrible. man they gave you ryan i mean ryan reynolds you had ryan reynolds and you made that movie suck well, you know they, it's like you know when they brought in the guy that was playing the bad guy and it He's just like uh, parallax. Yeah, yeah, that was that was, was that was all ridiculous. I'm like why? That was a ridiculous. And then they brought Sinestro in after that, and so uh, and then they didn't even do anything with it. And it's like I can't even, you know. And and from that point, I think at that point, that's when I started to, you know. But then they had the Dark Knight. They finished the Dark Knight series out after that. I loved all and, those. And the Dark Knight series is the best thing that DC's ever done. Mm-hmm. Like. Ever. They have never done anything better than that, and it doesn't look like they will. I mean, Wonder Woman looks like I, it's probably a good movie on its own. Didn't I like well, I like the first Wonder Woman, and I'm I'm not I'm, I'm I can't judge the second one because I hadn't seen it yet. But right. the, I like the first one. Yeah, now, uh, they got 1984, like one Wonder Woman 1984 coming out. So you know, it's just a shame that they're they're just trashing the whole series there. But hey, it is whatever they want to do. 
I don't know how we got started on comic books, but hey, you know what? This is what this show is about, man. Just talk yeah. whatever you want to talk about. Mm. You don't always have I'm a huge to talk comic about book paranormal. nerd. I, you know what? It's very nice to not have to talk about <laughs> paranormal stuff. Not to say that I don't like to, but um, you know, it's cool just to just to talk about whatever. So, well, you'll find with my show that I want my guests to come on and be themselves and talk about what you want to talk about. You know, of course, we'll throw in a little paranormal stuff here and in there, but, you know, be yourself, well, say what you want. In that case, the dude from Twilight is a terrible decision for Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, you had, uh, you had, what's his name for Batman? Um, oh, God, I'm drawing another blank here. Was Who's the guy that just played Bat? Oh, my Lord. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Ben, Affleck. Affleck. Well, ben doesn't want to work out he doesn't want to work out anymore. And I thought he was perfect as Batman. Well, you know, it's it's like um, if I were Ben Affleck, I wouldn't want to do that movie either. I would like I would like purposely like get fat or something <laughs> like, you know, like I don't know, like um, get out of shape. Get, yeah. So you can't be bad. I don't know. Like because that was that was terrible. Like Batman versus Superman was you know, I got, I got it. You want to, you want to skew off the storyline, the original storyline. That's cool, but you can't make things that didn't suck, suck. Right. That makes me mad. And, okay. You know, Batman versus Superman. I enjoyed it until they brought in Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He has no business playing Lex Luthor. Well, the, all, all, it was so soon. Everything was so soon. It right. smashed it was, together. It was just sped up too fast. Yeah, they, that was like all, that. That whole story of Doomsday was so off track. It was so off track that they it was made a different movie. They had to have a standalone movie for that story. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, exactly. If they wanted to play on General Zod, fine. Play on General Zod. Do what, do whatever you want with General Zod. You know, it's a different telling. Just. Because you know what's messed up is I, I liked the Man of Steel. I liked it too. That was a good. That was a good Superman movie. But um, you know, it's like so. What you do is you put. It's it's hard to imagine now another format for for releasing for like a building like a super like a comic book universe because MCU has done so well at it. Oh yeah. That it's like that format. If you know. Um, if it doesn't look like that, it doesn't make sense like that. I'm not going to want to watch it. You know, if, if it's like, uh, cause the way they just kind of, uh, trickled in the characters, they'd have a cameo appearance and, you know, one, uh, one of the main characters movies from another character. And then they'd end up releasing that character's movie next. And then, you know, they had a nice little, um, trajectory for releasing the films and then you know the combination and the fans actually kind of made their own um like order to watch the movies in so now you can go and look at the like at the um recommended mcu right. movie watching order and that's pretty cool so it's i definitely like that format enough to where i feel like um just dc is just i don't know if it's dc's um it's kind of hit and miss with them i don't know yeah i don't know if it's them or if it's it seems like it has to be them and just well, the poor decision making on who they're given the rights to to make the movies or something i don't know but um that's that's terrible that they they're dragging a lot of these good characters through through the mud um, this is my opinion but i think what they should have done is number one they need to pick a different lex luthor yeah, and yeah. I like Jesse Eisenberg, but it's just not Lex, was, Lex Luthor. I'm perfect in the zombie movie. I like yeah, it. But it's great. No, zombie Land's a great movie. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if they would have brought in somebody else, they would have taken the story a little bit slower. Right. And what they should do is they should wait until they've introduced everybody into the DC universe. Yep. Like they did with Marvel. And once right. they've got all the characters together, then you introduce Doomsday and kind of play off that same story that came out of the comic book. Right. Yeah. You can't, I mean, cause Why you can't not? have, Why not? yeah, you, 
Doomsday was a was exactly what his name implies. He was Doomsday. He was apocalypse for for superheroes pretty much. So and that's what he did. I and I remember and I guess this is part of the reason why I'm so butthurt about that movie is uh because I was 13 when all this stuff was transpiring in the comic books, you know, I was between the ages of like 11 and 13 as, as all this stuff was coming out. And, um, so, you know, to watch, to read the comics as they came out and to see Superman and the justice league, or it started out with the justice league battling doomsday, you know, and doomsday's like headed for metropolis and, you know, once he gets outside of Metropolis, here comes Superman, and there's this epic battle that just ensues for like two or three issues, and then they end up ultimately, you know, um, in short order, killing each other. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was that was such an epic part of my comic book experience when I was a kid that it seemed like they just purposely took a crap. <laughs> on you know that experience for me and because i don't know who who's making decisions and thought that was a good idea to for any of that storyline to go the way it did and you know like i say i'm cool with changing you know like i say mcu everything's not exactly the way it was in the comics that's right but i'm not angry about it because it's not a ridiculous retelling of the situation it makes sense the way they did it makes sense did you um, did you see. ever read the story of the origin of Doomsday? Um, I th- I believe I did, and it it didn't really have. Okay, originally, I think that was a that was a retrofit, is what that was. They like because they went back and they were trying mm-hmm. to make it work, and you know I I get that. Um, but initially, Doomsday was like not supposed to have a backstory. You know, like Shield was just they found, or not Shield, um, whatever, whoever the it's the equivalent of Shield in DC, but um, they had just like had him sealed up because he was this monstrosity, and he couldn't get loose, and then he got loose, and then this is what happened. So that was like kind of the point, I think. You know, initially, initially anyway, was like the Joker. There, yeah, there was no point. Uh, this is the point with Doomsday. This is what drives him is just nothing. He just wants to destroy. And Superman, for whatever reason. But it wasn't like initially meant for us to know why. And I think they kind of did that for a reason. Because they had some future plans that were, they were bad. Like with Nick Cage. Oh, God. I saw clips of that. And I'm glad uh, that movie didn't happen. All that was all that was being talked about at that time, you know, and it's like, mm, I, you know, and I think they kind of wanted to leave it open ended. Uh, that's just my opinion. I, mean, I and I don't know. I I'm not a big authority on comics. Like, uh, there's probably a lot of people who are way more knowledgeable about everything and it and how it transpired. But um, you know, the way I remember it, <laughs> completely nothing like you know. So yeah, that turned me off. I have the origin story of Doomsday. I like it. I think yeah. it's awesome. Oh, it pro- and it probably is. Um, I haven't I haven't read it because, like I said, I fell off of DC a while back. <laughs> I'll let you borrow it sometime. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I can just speak from from my experiences. You know, a, like eleven year old and a thirteen year old, like. You know, looking back, my my thirteen year old self would probably hate that. Yeah, I would was, probably just absolutely hate that. So. I think I was about to my mid twenties when all that came out. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, but it was like early nineties. So yeah. Yeah, I I don't care. I I'm a nerd. I'm gonna keep watching as long as there's two superhero movies. I'm going. I might be in a wheelchair, but I'm gonna go. I see I'm not a big movie movie fan I like going to movies. I like mm-hmm. to j- j- you know I got my TV got <laughs> my big TV in the living room and I'll I'll watch movies at home. Uh it depends on what it is. Like if it's That's um, me. That's me. It depends on the movie. Yeah. It's um, like The Avengers. I could not wait. I had to go to the theaters. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is is um all, 
even though I wasn't a big DC fan and I was a Marvel fan, I wasn't a huge fan of the Avengers per se when I was younger. Like it was mainly X-Men. Like X-Men was my thing. That was, that was, you know, Wolverine was X-Men. I hated Cyclops like everybody. <laughs> and, you know, um, yeah, Magneto. You just had all the really cool, like it was drama. It was like a, it was like a, a comic book drama more than the other comics were I, I felt like so okay so who's your favorite marvel character you know now it's deadpool and it has been for a long time even before the movie started coming out but for the longest time it was wolverine and you know what's weird is i i really became a hardcore deadpool fan whenever uh the low the the um wolverine movie came out mm -hmm. but not because of that movie because it was well it was because of that movie but it's not because deadpool was so on point in that movie because it was way off it was the most terrible thing i had ever seen as far as a, a superhero being portrayed on a, on a movie screen that original deadpool was oh, terrible God. it was but Oh. It was only terrible when they made him Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds was great, and he was on point until they actually made him Deadpool, and that's when it was terrible, right? And uh, so at that point, I, I started – I was like, man, that's not Deadpool, you know? And so I'm, I start going back and looking through my Deadpool comics because I did have Deadpool comics, and it was um, – I was like, yeah, no. Nah. And then that's when I really got more on the Deadpool bandwagon, even though I knew a lot about him, but – um. <laughs> Yeah, Wolverine was always my favorite, man. And I thought Hugh Jackman was great. I thought the movies could have been done a lot better. But hey, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and whine about everything. But um Marvel's got the got the X Men back. Right, so. yeah. So MCU, Disney. Hey, you know what? I, I used to hate on Disney a lot, but you know, I'm not even gonna say anything 'cause Better not, because they're going to own everything for you know it anyway. Yeah, yeah. You think somebody come along and and be like competition or something, but it doesn't look like it, does no. it? Uh, you know what? And it, uh, I mean, is that messed up? Like as far as like um, Disney basically controlling all the content that we consume on the big screen and a lot of it on the small screen, and you know. Um, so like but at the same time it's kind of hard to not appreciate it because of what they have done with some of the movies like um you know the mcu so well disney i feel like they're in my house like they they they, they invaded they my probably, house a, they a long time ago like years ago they're watching they're watching your every move right they know disney knows everything about me so <laughs> and <laughs> And so does Siri. Yeah, Siri knows everything. Well, I got rid of Siri. I got um, I have an Android now. No, okay. So, well, yeah. look little, now it's just Google. Yeah, Google. Well, all owns those me. they all they're all listening. Google owns me pretty much. So I, everything I have is Google. I have Google Fiber Internet. And I have you know YouTube. That's what I watch. And Google owns YouTube. And you know like so. Pfft, like everything that I've consumed ad related because I watch YouTube and I listen to YouTube music. So everything I consume ad, ad related is basically decided by Google. Well, that's, you know, that's messed up. We've, we've <laughs> proved this time and time and again, we'll sit there and we'll have a conversation about <laughs> something. And then as soon as you turn your phone on and you start to look for anything, what you were talking about pops up on your phone. Right. No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Or it comes up in your in your um, like a um, a, a ad for it will come up on your Facebook feed. Exactly. All yeah. the time. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They know. We don't have a whole lot of time left, and I know we've gotten completely <laughs> off the subject. We did. Ask me some paranormal <laughs> stuff, because I want to. I mean, you know. All right. I'm gonna see if you give me the same answer that Sarah gave me. Are we going okay. to see more ghosts in Morgan City? <clears throat> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. Uh, see, that's pretty close to what she said. And <laughs> and it, but if I knew, 
I couldn't say. I I understand that. Even if I knew either way. This is her answer. Stay tuned. Just stay, stay tuned. tuned. Yeah, and that's I say that a lot. Um, we'll see. Stay tuned. Right. I'm sorry, my daughter's messaging me. No, no, no. no. Distracting me. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, obviously, things have been kind of put on hold pretty much everywhere yes. and everything for a while. So um, if we were going to have something coming out, it may be may have been delayed. So um, or even doing anything. So, you know, just um, because we haven't put anything out yet doesn't mean we're not. I'm going to say that. <laughs> You know, but it also doesn't mean we are. Right, right. I hear you. <laughs> my my wife was raised in Morgan City. Oh, okay, cool. So there's a personal kind of connection there. That's, yes. that's awesome. Why is my phone? See, dude, I was talking about Google, and look at this. It, I, you can't see it, probably. Dang yeah, it. Nope. It's all it's too blurry. Up. Yeah, it's it come up and started listening to me. Well, of course. That's nuts. That is nuts, man. Did I say, hey, Google? I don't remember that, but. I mean, I remember saying Google, but that's all you have to say. And then it starts recording your, on your Android. So that's nuts. Anyway. I changed my Siri, though, on my phone. It sounds like a, an English butler. Oh, yeah. I, I had uh, I had the Irish chick. <laughs> all right. So, Morgan City. Has there been a place there that just creeped you the hell out and you were not going to go in there at all? Or you just, you just go get them. There's not a lot of places and I'm not trying to like flex or, or be Billy badass, but there's not a lot of places that I get afraid to even investigate or to walk into. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously places that I get to creep. So I walk into, but, I'm kind of weird. It kind of, that motivates me to find out what's going on as opposed to some people being turned the other way. So the, uh, the, actually for me, the creepier, the better. Um, so no, there were no places that there were places that I was super excited about investigating, like the headquarters building. That was a big one for me because I, you know, I did get a, a vibe in there from, from that place. And, um, like the first time I walked in. So that was a really cool investigation to do. Um, you know, and then the lake was pretty much outside, but it was, it was kind of a creepy atmosphere. Definitely when it was, when everything was happening, but not like a constant thing, like a lot of places you go to are. Uh, like, it doesn't matter when you go in, you creeped out. Um, but yeah, there, there were there were definitely some places that that are down there that are definitely pretty scary places for most people. Um, to me, you don't, it don't matter where you go in Louisiana; it seems a little scary. Oh yeah, no. There's definitely some creepy, creepy places all over. And I lived down there for. Uh, well, I lived in uh, Leesville for yeah. like uh, two years, three years when I was in the army, right before I got out. So, because I, I was stationed at Fort Polk, so. Oh, um, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I was right, right up the road there. Did Did you meet any of the guys from Swamp People while you were there? Uh no. I met one of the guys whenever, um, whenever I, at a at a convention. No, 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 no. That was uh, that wasn't swamp people. <laughs> that was mountain mountain monsters or whatever those guys are. <laughs> those dudes are a trip. No, but no, I never got to meet uh, like the people from swamp people. I met some swamp people. <laughs> well, there's plenty of them in Louisiana. <laughs> Not those swamp people. What well, I tell you a real quick story, and I'll get off talking about myself. But <laughs> you know, like I said, my wife she was raised in Morgan City. Well, we made a trip there for a wedding. And so we're at the wedding and lo and behold, Troy Landry from Swamp People comes in and we got to hang out with him because the families, you know, are all, they all know each other around there. It's really, it's kind of cool. I know. Yeah. Of yeah. No, they definitely all know each other. Um, yeah. This is a very tight knit Cajun community down there. I, I have met a lot of cool, really cool Cajun folk down there so you know 
They're oh. just generally the what well, they have, you know, and I'm not saying that this myself, but I'm saying a lot of people say this in Louisiana and you can <laughs> interpret this the way you want. They say uh anybody below anywhere you go below highway 10 like you're you're welcome there like oh, yeah. everybody's I-10. very welcoming and uh yeah i i tend so everybody's very welcoming and everybody's very friendly and everybody kind of knows each other or knows of their families or, or whatever and so that's a that's a pretty common thing down there oh yeah you know all in all when you meet people from the south they're generally really nice people and they will they'll show you so much hospitality Mm -hmm. you know especially when it comes to eating if you don't eat when a southern person um offers it to you (laughs) you are you have offended them you don't usually have a lot of choice (laughs) i heard y'all got a lot of crawfish while you were there oh man yeah i was sharing videos um just dumping out like buckets of crawfish. Yeah, I was I was killing it. I love crawfish. Did you suck the heads? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tails. <laughs> suck the head. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, we had that. They they actually uh we had a big cookout and um there's a lot of cool uh people there that made some really great food, and they're just very interesting people, you know, and like uh they're very interesting to talk to, you know, and fun to talk to. So yeah. Uh, Louisiana is always a, a awesome place to go. Um, not real fond of the love bugs and, and, you know, in late summer, um, yeah, the love bugs, they get on my nerves, but outside of that, it's a great place. Especially when you're driving around and they get all over your vehicle, you know, oh, like yeah. to never get those things cleaned off. Yep. And I mean, it's, they're, they're like, um, they're like, uh, like secret ninja bugs too. Cause you look out your window and you're like, okay, I don't even see any love bugs out there flying around all over the place. As soon as you walk outside, they just, they just appear out of nowhere like ninjas and just flying all in your face, trying to like land on your eye and stuff. It's like, man, <laughs> it's crazy. There's so many of them. Yeah. And they get stuck all over your car, eat the paint off your car. Oh yeah. Then the June bugs. Don't forget the June bugs. Oh well, June bugs. We get them pretty much everywhere I've lived. I've had June bugs. So yeah, like South Carolina's pretty big on June bugs. What's that combination? You got the love <laughs> bugs and the June bugs at the yeah, same time. That's true. I don't. I don't like the the spiders in the fall. You know the big um, orb weavers. Oh, those barn door spiders. They look scary as hell. I mean, they won't hurt you, but they just look scary. Man, yeah, to get one on me, I I just lose my mind. I'm not a fan of spiders. Like I'm not I'm not terrified. I'm not going to run from them. But that's that's one thing now that that scares me. Like when I have to go in a place that's just chock full of spiders. Oh, and unfortunately a lot of the places I have to go are like that. So it's it's hard for me to be afraid of anything else when I'm being afraid of freaking spiders. Well, you can come time, here and deal with the scorpions. No, man, I'm good. I'm <laughs> I'm good on the um, scorpions too. Pretty much insects in general. I, that you know, I'm not not a big fan. <laughs> okay, are you a fan of the gamecocks? <sighs> um, my dad would probably not be happy with me if I said I wasn't. Oh, okay. We won't tell him then. Uh, yeah, well, I grew up in, uh, in a different part of the state. And so like, uh, I grew up right next to Clemson. So, oh, okay. I got you. I, I mean, I, I grew up in Anderson County and that's where Clemson university is, is sits inside of Anderson, Anderson County. And, uh, so, you know, I remember riding down the, the tiger paws quite often. Um, so it was hard to be a Carolina fan and be in the same town yeah. based, not the same town, but the same County as, as Clemson. Right. But I, I you know, I ended, ended up being a fan of both and I didn't really get into the whole rivalry thing. Cause I didn't have time for it. So, <laughs> so yes, you. but yes, ultimately, yes, I am a Gamecocks fan. So Carolina Gamecocks and, and Clemson, Clemson well, Tigers. 
I rooted for Clemson when they were playing Alabama. Right. I hate Alabama. I'm sorry, but yeah. I hate Alabama. <laughs> but well, yeah. when they went to the championship and LSU was there, mm -hmm. sorry, I had that switched to LSU. Yeah, a lot of people are LSU fans, you know, and hey, that's quite, it's quite wife, understandable. My wife is a big LSU and Saints fan, so. Right. And, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know this for sure, but unless you have some kind of tie to, like, South Carolina or something, I would imagine most people would make that decision to choose LSU over – because, I mean, what other reason would you have to – Well, only reason why I ask is I had a friend of mine from high school – he uh, he played a little bit in the NFL, but then he ended up being linebackers coach for South Carolina. Oh, cool! So I had to root for him while he was there. Right? Yeah, I remember I've I watched Carolina Gamecocks play like for years and years and years. Um, you know, all through football season, and um, yep. Uh, they all we also had the uh, we have the who's it the um, the Paladins. Uh, it's, it's like a, another college team, but yeah, uh, yeah. But they weren't that big of a deal as as, um, as Clemson and Carolina obviously were and still are. Yeah, well, I root for Vanderbilt when I'm not rooting for my Longhorns. So right. if that tells you anything, I'm, I'm used to the losing part of it anyway. Vanderbilt, right. not UT. Come on, UT. Oh, it's, it was but, Furman, Furman, Furman University. Furman University is the Paladins. Uh, okay. yeah. I got but they're not that they're not like a, a big college team so but well, anyway so we got off of paranormal again and back on, and on the football somehow which is like <laughs> not even one of my <laughs> not even a big topic for hey, me but dude i'm, I'm from texas we it's live like, breathe eat, oh i sleep football yeah i know i've i've had some friends from texas and they 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 live dude. by it so i completely understand I don't care if it's high school, if it's college, <laughs> it's a, the new if it's, uh, if XFL. It could be I don't Little care. League. We'll watch Little League. Just <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're playing Little League across the street. Yeah, hey, Let's check it out. Hey, hey you, kid, you kids playing football today out in the backyard? All right. Well, you know, they canceled all the games, so we're going <laughs> <laughs> to we, we set up some chairs. and We even yeah. have a lingerie league that plays here. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've heard about the lingerie league. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't care if it's football. We're gonna watch it. Yeah, well, that's kind of the way it is in South Carolina too. You know, because uh, there there ain't a whole lot else to do. Mm. So, <laughs> I hear you. so Thursday, Friday nights is uh, JV and the varsity football games every every week. But you know, I basically you. whatever sports in season, we're gonna be at those games. Like that's just the way it is growing up and. Well, for me, that's what it was out in the country. I hear you, man. I hear you. Yep. So, let's, we might stay on Facebook a little bit longer, but okay. uh, we'll end the show. And what I like to end the show is if you have any kind of projects or, you know, you want people to get in touch with you, how do they go about it? Um, well, yeah, um, I'm part of Supernatural Inc., um, paranormal research organization. So, uh, you know, Facebook, um, supernatural Inc with a K and, um, we, uh, we also, and that's, and that's myself, my wife, Katie Stafford and, um, William Pimblot or Doug as we know him. And, um, so yeah, we do a lot of stuff on there and, uh, I build equipment also and Doug does and we post that stuff on there. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, you can go there and check that out. Supernatural Inc on Facebook. Um, also have a Instagram page. I don't really get on there that much, but you know, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Uh, I used to, <laughs> but it's like, um, I just don't, I, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of posting stuff and, and uh, I'm right. constantly, you know, a lot of people are whatever they do is like on the computer anyway. So, but me, I'm like working my hands all the time. So it's hard to, it, but anyway. Um, so yeah, you can go there and check that out. Uh, we have a website that hopefully will be operational soon. Um, that'll be supernaturalink.com. So um, we're working on that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. And yeah. um, I, I would say events that we're going to be doing soon but not really doing any 
now well we have we do have um uh out in ohio they're they're putting on a um an event um did they did they reschedule ottawa so is it still rescheduled so for for now we still have an event out in ottawa in may scheduled oh. for may for now and that's tentative obviously it's and when did we reschedule the Patterson event for? May also. So we have the Patterson, uh, we have a Patterson event coming up, Patterson house event coming up. And uh, so I think we have, uh, we'll have a few tickets left for that, right? Because some people. Okay. So there's five spots for that left open. So, you know, we, it's like a small event. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you know events, and you, like I say, you can go on the Supernatural Inc. page and find all that stuff. So, oh sweet! Yep. Thank you for being on Into the Pit. Yeah, to- yeah, no problem. I had fun. I, Thank I you for having so, me on. I feel so humbled because you and Sarah and Ben have all been on my show, and that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. I feel I feel it's nice to be included. <laughs> oh well, Sarah, she really spoke highly of you, and that's she awesome. made. She made sure when I was talking about the show that I mentioned your name. So I'm like, <laughs> thank you for correcting me. <laughs> yeah, Sarah. Sarah's a good person. She's, She's uh, awesome. I, she ain't got a bad bone in her body. So, you know. <laughs> uh, she's she's an angel, I must yep. say. Yep. Okay, well, I'm, I'm ending into the pit, and we will probably do Facebook Live for a few more minutes and call Sounds it a day. Good. All right. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.